I even brought a spare suit. I had one suit that I was going to wear for the five and six and then another one for the 10, you know. And, man, uh, it was during baseball season. And so uh, the Royals were in town, and they were playing the Mariners. And this this show you how long ago it was and how old I am. Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. was a rookie on the team. And so, uh, I mean, this dude was amazing. You know, this dude's a great player, man. And, and they put me with, with Lynn Dawson, and they sent me, they sent us out to Royal Stadium. And we were going to do the five and six o'clock shows from, from Royal, we would do a hit from Royal Stadium. And then we would have dinner there and then come back and do the 10 o'clock sportscast from the studio at Channel 9. So we're there and I meet everybody and Lynn Dawson is taking me around. And at this time, this, is, this was pre-Patrick Mahomes. So Lynn Dawson was the only quarterback, you know, that ever won a Super Bowl for, the, for Kansas City. So, you know, he was the king of Kansas City still after all those years, you know. And so anywhere I went with Lynn Dawson, I had access to everything, you know. And even when we met Ken Griffey Jr., man, I saw him in the batting cages and my jaw dropped. And Lynn was like, oh, you like, you like Griffey? I said, yes, sir. He said, you want to interview him? I said, oh, no, I can't. I couldn't do that. I, he said, oh, he says, oh, don't worry about it. He says, I'll, I'll go ask him. And so he goes over to him, and uh, Griffey stops his batting practice when Lynn Dawson walks up. He stops taking BP. He comes out of the cage, and he comes over and shakes his hand. Hello, Mr. Dawson. It's so great to meet you, sir. I mean, the kid was so polite, and he knew who Lynn Dawson was. He knew about his history. And uh, his dad was was one of the uh, assistant coaches on the team at the time. And so, you know, I'm meeting, I'm, I, here I am now, you know, Lynn Dawson is introducing me. I'm meeting Lou Pinella, who was the manager. I met King Griffey Sr. And now I'm meeting King Griffey Jr. And Lynn, it says, uh, this is Sanford Robinson. He's our guest sportscaster. And I uh, want to know if, uh, if he could do an interview with you. And Griffey was like, well, sure, Mr. Dawson, anything for you, sir. And it, he let me interview him. And, man, so I, I interviewed King Griffey Jr. I'm, like, floating on a cloud. And so we go in after the 6 o'clock, after the 6 o'clock news hit. And I had met, you know, by this time, I had met all the guys. I met George Brett, Frank White, you know, all these dudes, man. And, and uh, we went in and we had dinner at the stadium club inside Royal Stadium after the six o'clock news. And so I'm sitting at this big long table at the stadium club and all the sportscasters that I watch every night were all sitting around this one table from all the stations. And Lynn Dawson and Karen Karnacki get up and they introduce me to everybody. And uh, you know, so we, we, we all we're sitting around, we're eating, we're talking. And, and it, you know, I just conversation, you know, just in conversation, I said, you know, back when I was in high school, you guys used to have a, a, a technical director that worked for you all. And um, his name, you know, I, I, I said, but I said, uh, he used to work for you guys, but when in my senior year, he moved away to Los Angeles. I said, that was about 10 years ago. They said, oh, you mean John Allgood? I said, yes, that was his name. And they said, oh, John moved back a few years ago. I said, really? Wow, that's so cool. I, I, I worked with him that one day on that project, and I never saw him again. They said, you want to meet him? I said, well, he probably wouldn't even remember who I am. I only worked with him the one day. But, I mean, if you think I can, sure. And so they said, all right, well, yeah, we'll talk to him. We'll set it up. They went to him and they asked John about me and he remembered me from that working with him that one day, 10 years earlier. And so John invited me to come and hang out with him at the station. And it was on 4th of July. He was working in master control. It was 4th of July. So I had the day off from my job at the, at the box plant. I was working at, I was working at stone container at a, at a box 
a cardboard box plant in Kansas City. And um, so I went in and I hung out with John and, you know, we spent the day and he showed me all around the station and stuff. And finally, he says to me, he says, you know, I remember back in high school, you were really interested in this, in this kind of work. Would you still be interested in working in this field now? And I said, yeah, you know, John, I would, but, you know, just totally forgetting everything that God had said to me that, that, that night in Tulsa. I, you know, I really, I would love to, man, but I said, but I, not man, but sir, I would love to, sir, but, you know, I, I, I didn't finish college and I don't have a degree in, in, in broadcast journalism, so I don't really think I could. He says, ah, you want to work in this business or not? You don't need no stinking degree to do what I'm doing. And I said, well, I would love to come and, and just learn and, like, you know, be an intern or something and, and just watch you guys. He says, well, okay, well, let me, give me your phone number. Let me talk to some people and, and we'll give you a call. So I gave him my number. And one of the things that, that God had spoke to me that night during that marathon prayer session, he said, everything that you need to learn about television, I'm going to send people to you to teach you. All you have to do is just be willing to listen and learn. And so I went to, you know, well, actually, I gave John my number. And the very next day, I get a phone call from this lady at Channel 9. And she calls me and she says, hey, uh, we, uh, we're, we're going to be starting this new show, this new newscast here at Channel 9 called, called First News. And uh, we're looking for someone to work in the graphics department. And we would, like to, uh, we would like to interview you for a position that we have in our graphics department. And I'm, I'm elated and terrified at the same time. Because, you know, I'm thrilled that, oh, wow, this lady wants to talk to me about working at Channel 9. Oh, my goodness. But I'm terrified because I know I don't have any experience. And I don't know what John told these people, but, you know, they're going to throw me out of there when they find out that I never went to college. And so I showed up at the place. And when I got there, she, you know, she, they, you know, they let me in. She introduced herself. They brought me to her office. They closed the door. And she says, have a seat. So I sit down. And she says, well, uh, and John wasn't there. You know, I'm looking around for John at least to have some backup in the room with me, some support. John wasn't even there. And so she says, well, um, we have this position and here are the hours and uh, here's the pay. And, you know, John seems to think that you would, would be very good at this position. And so uh, we just want to know when can you start? That was my interview. For Channel 9. Oh. And I, I was like, uh, oh, hold on, slow down a second. I don't know if John actually told you everything I said, but I don't really have any experience in graphics. I didn't want to tell the lady that I had never even went to school. And I, I hadn't even filled out an application, Charlie. I just, you know, just walked in. She says, okay, this is your job. When can you start? And so I told her, I said, I don't really have any experience at this. And she says, well, um, what we want to do is we want to give you on the job training. And we can't give you any training unless you're an employee because we're a union shop. So you can't touch any equipment unless you're an employee. So what we want to do is we want to hire you and we'll teach you how to run everything that you need to run. And so everything that God had said was all starting to fall into place. Hmm. So I showed up, man. And I, I remember I was so excited and, and so grateful to God for even giving me this opportunity because I felt like I had blown it. You know, my, my chance was gone because I didn't go to school. And, you know, by now I'm married. I got two little kids. I can't even afford to go 
to junior college, let alone college, you know? So you know, I just felt like, you know, my, my window of opportunity had closed. And in one fell swoop, God just opened it back up. So I was grateful, man, and I was hungry. I wanted to learn everything that I could learn. And with it being a union shop, everybody had their one union job. And that's all they really wanted to do, you know, was their, their job. And I wanted to learn everything. And I was young, I was eager. And, you know, so I was really the only person that really wanted to learn all these other positions. I wanted to learn what everybody did. And they loved it, you know, because they got a chance to teach me what everybody else did. Um, and so I got that opportunity and just took full advantage of it. But, you know, you talk about people not knowing the, the real work that goes into it, man. I mean, the first night that I, that I was invited to come and watch a newscast, I knew that I wasn't going to have a ride home after the newscast was over with. And it was a 10 o'clock news. And at the time, Channel 9 was, was uh, in, the Lyric, in the Lyric building downtown in Kansas City, Missouri. And I lived on 38th Street in Kansas City, Kansas. And I knew that if I, you know, if I want to go and show these people that I'm serious about wanting to do this job, I got to show up and, and learn about this equipment. But I also knew that if I show up and learn, I'm gonna have to walk home. And I gotta dress appropriately to, to go there. So I'm dressed in, in dress shoes and slacks and button down shirt. And you know, I, 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 you didn't wanna show up with a pair of, you know, an extra set of clothes or what is, what's that for? Well, cause I'm gonna be walking home after the show. So, right. you know, so. I just showed up in my business attire. And man, after that show, I walked home. It was, you know, it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm walking across Lewis and Clark Viaduct. You know, cars whizzing by, you know, dark. And I had to walk home several times because we only had one car. And one car, you know, I had two jobs. My wife had one job. And sometimes I couldn't have the car to, to get home from work. So she, some, there were times where she would have to drop me off. I'd have to walk home. But man, I did it gladly because I was just so grateful for the opportunity to be able to finally walk in my calling and, and to, to work in the field of my destiny. You know, I just, I, I did it without any hesitation, you know, and no, no complaints. I never complained. I never, I never turned down opportunity. Anytime they wanted to teach me something, I was willing to learn it. And I was in, in all the stuff that the majority of the training that I got, I got that training off the clock and I was willing to come in and do it. No pay and going to have to walk home. And I did it, man. That's awesome. And that's what got me where I am today. Right. That's awesome. How far, how long a walk was that? Man, it had to be a good seven, eight, close to 10 miles one way, you know, and I did it with dress shoes on, glisters on my feet, you know. Paying the price. Paying the price. Paying the price. So this is this is awesome, and this is I just think so important for people to see because it's easy to to say, oh, I can't do that, or this is embarrassing, or I don't want anyone to see me, or mm -hmm. all these things. But sometimes it's what it takes, right? It's what right. it takes that putting your pride away and that that humility to be able to do that. So that's sure. So commend yeah. you for that. So I want to I want to hit something else pretty. Uh, this is so powerful. All this stuff is so powerful. 